on what's involved in restoring an Auto 5. I've done literally thousands of them. And uh, these poor old guns can be a lot of work. Uh, they sometimes come in pretty rough. Back in years past, they were just shooters and beaters, and that's what guys did with them. Now they turn into a little bit of a collector's item, so guys are trying to restore them, get them back like new. So that's what we do. Anyway, I got in this rough little 20 gauge A5 the other day. Um, one of those little guns that's just been used long and hard. Been, uh, as they say, rode hard and put up wet. Uh, wood's pretty rough on it. Uh, a lot of use. Check rings worn flat. Stock, uh, same thing, pretty rough. A lot of scuffs and dings. Check rings flat. Uh, usually they got some cracks in them that need repair. This one, this one for some reason doesn't have any cracks, which is kind of unusual. A lot of times those forms will crack down at the, the base where they come into contact with the receiver. But anyway, th this one just needs a good recut and a refinish, and we're going to do this done in a semi-gloss finish, not that real high deep gloss that we do on some of the newer models. But the uh, receiver is pretty rough on it. It's got a lot of pitting in it. It's, uh, it's got that brown patina look to it. Gold, of course, is worn off the trigger. And uh, we're going to uh, dismantle this gun and uh, go into the polishing process and uh, show you what's involved in the restoration of one of these old guns. But be careful on this one. Uh, it's got some lettering on the barrel. They all do. But this lettering is very light, and it has the matting on the rib. They call this a mat rib. I call that a plain barrel, but Browning's always called that a mat rib. It's a plain barrel with this matting on it. So we've got to work around all this matting and save that and this light lettering. But uh, we're going to salvage all that and save it and uh, make this little gun look like new. So uh, we'll get it uh, torn down here in the next phase. And at that time, we'll inspect it and look for worn and broken parts. And then at that time, we'll begin our polish work on it. All right, the next phase of uh, uh, in our re process on this little Auto 5 20 gauge is uh, the disassembly of it. And at that time, I uh, start my inspection process kind of looking for worn or broken parts. And uh, one place I look, I look at first is uh, I check the, uh, the rail on the uh, locking block. Uh, these early models, that's what we call a narrow rail, have a tendency to break off. Uh, this one's still good. However, I noticed as I was breaking it down, left-hand extractor is broken off. So as I uh, reassemble this gun, I'll make a note of that and slip in a good... Uh, uh, new extractor. So anyway, during the uh, disassembly process is when we do a lot of our inspection for worn parts. Didn't really see much in this gun. It's got a lot of uh, badly burred screws, and um, lock screws especially, that I might have to replace. We'll polish them the best we can, but if we can't clean up the burrs, uh, we'll replace those screws so it looks bright. And then we're going to go from here over to the glass bead machine. We're going to sandblast uh, this rust off so we can kind of get an idea of what kind of pitting we have in the metal. And all that pitting has to be polished out. It all has to be removed. So we'll head for the sandblaster from here. All right, I stepped over to my trusty sandblaster here, the old machine I've had for about 30 years, and I use the heck out of this thing. Now I'm going to switch it on. I got my uh, receiver uh, in the machine. And I'm gonna get my gloves on. And I'm going to commence to uh, B blast some of this rust off. Here's a bad spot right here. And uh, we're going to see what we've got here. This will this will get the rust off and clean it up. And then we can see how deep the pitting is. And this one doesn't look too bad. It's going to take a little work to clean it up, but uh, uh, we'll uh, get it blasted off and we'll bring it over and take a closer look at it. All right, I've just come back from my trusty sandblaster over there and I've uh, B blasted this receiver off. I've uh, knocked off all the rust that was on it and blasted out the engraving. Now, when I say blast, I'm not talking about a, a coarse sand that takes engraving out. It really has no effect, uh, effect on engraving at all. It does blast the rust out. It's a number 13 bead. It's fine as flour. But it will blast the uh, rust off of it and get it up out of the engraving uh, so we can uh, see what we're up against. And anyway, this gun is not a real bad one. It's got a lot of frosting type of a pitting in through here. And uh, that all has to be removed. It, bluing doesn't hide anything. Bluing uh, is actually an oxidizing process when we put this in the tank. We'll show you later. But the way this goes into the tank is the way it's going to come out. I could throw this, this receiver in the bluing tank right now, and it would come out with a color, kind of a dull, frosty uh, black, which a lot of guys uh, use on what we call that's a stalker finish or a matte finish, matte blue. So um, the all the... Uh, 
the salts do is turn it black. So we're going to polish this one make it look like factory. And uh, we'll go into our polishing process next now that we can see what we're up against since we beaded the uh, rust off of it. All right, I've been back over to my sandblaster again, and I've been blasting on this barrel, bee blasting the uh, lettering out. I want to kind of get that uh, rust out of it so we could just see how bad it was. And I bee blasted out the matting that's on top of the rib. We want to get that rust out of there before we start polishing on it. And then we're going to commence our polishing operation. I have my receiver in the vise and ready to polish. I'm going to start with a rough grid of paper like a 120. This is a piece of cork. It's a rubberized cork. Excellent for a backing on polishing because we like to hand polish all we do here. And uh, we're going to commence to polish on this receiver and start uh, getting that pitting out. And uh, after we've uh, commenced to work on this for a while, we'll bring it over and kind of show you the uh, final uh, product. And we'll uh, be uh, moving right along with that in just a little bit. All right, we've buffed this, uh, this receiver on the, uh, our Tampico brush wheel here. And it's giving this receiver a nice satiny sheen. Let me wipe off some of the compound and we can kind of see what uh, kind of a finish we end up with here. It's going to be a nice soft satiny sheen. Now what I'm trying to do is get this thing totally ready to throw in a bluing tank because you got to remember on bluing, all those tanks do down there is turn it black. The, uh, the uh, type of polish that you put on the metal is going to, that's the way it's going to look when it comes right out of that tank. There again, if I wanted to buff this on a rag wheel, make it as shiny as a mirror, that's the way it would look. But we want this to look factory, and this has a nice satiny sheen to it now. And uh, when that comes out of the tank, it's going to look just like it does now, except it's going to be black. But it's not going to hide anything. It's not going to cover up anything. Uh, it won't highlight or bring out engraving or smother engraving. It's just it'll be black, and uh, it, it will have a, a factory type of finish, and uh, no one will ever know the gun's been blued. So we'll proceed from here down to the... Uh, bluing room and uh, get this uh, receiver in the tank and all right today we're in the salt bluing room uh, well actually we do it all here we rust blue and we salt blue we do a little bit of everything in here bluing is just a dirty nasty uh, job it's just it's dirty filthy we keep it in a separate uh, room all by itself away away from the rest of the shop because we have a lot of caustic materials cooking here we've got uh, oh we've got all sorts of tanks here uh, we've got a tank over here that's kind of got a degreaser in it. Uh, this is just a hot water tank for boiling out. This is another degreaser tank here. We have several because we do so much at one time. We run mass production on these things as we're, we're blueing. This is a degreaser tank here. This is just a cold water rinse tank. Then the real business end of it is right over here. This is a salt tank. This is where we blue guns that have uh, old receivers. Uh, guns that have silver soldered barrels we can blue in this tank. Uh, we can't do soft solder barrels in that tank because uh, the salts attack the uh, solder and, uh, and then your ribs come off your barrel. So we get hot water glue those and we'll go through that here later. Tank back in the far back is a silver solder blacker tank. It'll blacken the silver solder uh, that's uh, along the ribs of a lot of the uh, uh, modern guns. Have in here right now a uh, browning A5 barrel that I've been cooking back there for a while. And uh, it had a streak of silver solder along the ribs. And uh, I have now blackened that silver solder. It just makes them look more professional and better if you don't have that streak on. So uh, I rinsed it in the cold water tank. Now I'm going to cook it in the hot water tank here for a while to kind of boil those salts out of it. But uh, this is where we're going to be gluing our automatic 5 receiver that we've been polishing on. And uh, it's going to be going into tanks here shortly. Uh, salts are rolling at about 290 degrees and uh, up to a good temperature right now. We have in here. Uh, uh, we blew a lot of items, uh, small parts, in baskets. And here's some baskets I'm rinsing off right now that have just come out of the salt tank. Have small parts in there. And uh, we're going to hang those in the hot water here shortly to uh, uh, boil those out. Here's some baby 25 parts. We're going to put those in the hot water. The hot water just boils the salts out of the nooks and crannies and, and the, uh, the screw holes and that sort of thing. And we don't leave them in there too long, oh, four or five minutes, something like that. And, uh, but as we go along here, we uh, have to keep this tank kind of cool down. Uh, we're kind of getting up to the temperature here where we've got to drop, drop it a little bit. Then we're going to be gluing some uh, SKD barrels here that uh, have a special solder on them. We can salt glue those. Uh, we resolder ribs on them with a special solder. We can leave them in the salts and this, this solder is not attacked. So anyway, this is the business end of the salt gluing room. It's just uh, kind of a 
uh, a dirty, uh, nasty job when it comes to bluing. Around behind here, we've got some finished barrels hanging on the rack. Uh, we just uh, some SKB SKB barrels we just pulled out. Uh, we've dipped them in a uh, water displacing oil and hang them. We hang them up here, and then they're kind of dripping back in the pan here. So these barrels are ready to clean up. We got to polish the bores and all the bright areas now, and um, get those so they look factory. That's the whole idea: is to try to make everything look factory. So anyway, we're coming right along. Here's a uh, here's my uh, 85 barrel. It's uh, cooked long enough in there, and uh, now we're going to dip it in the displacing oil, water displacing, and just hang it up to uh, drip out. And there's uh, there's a finished product. So that's our barrel off our A5. And, our uh, receiver is getting ready to go in shortly, and uh, that gun will be coming right along. And my next phase will be polishing the small parts to it and assembling and gold plating the trigger. And uh, we'll be going through that next uh, as soon as we get done here today. Well, we're still in the process of bluing this automatic five we started on the other day, and um, we're down here bluing today. This room's kind of steaming off because it's about five degrees outside, and so all my tanks make it look pretty. Uh, Steamy, it's not always like this. I've kind of turned my vent fan off a little bit too so you can hear me. Uh, I've been cooking this uh, A5 uh, receiver and barrel back in this degreaser tank we talked about the other day. The same tank I degrease in when I do a rust blue. But uh, we're salt bluing today. And uh, I've been cooking this uh, receiver in here for about 15 20 minutes. What this tank does, it's a degreaser tank. It cooks the buffing compound and the sludge and junk out of the screw holes. So, what I'm going to do is pull it out now. And we uh, take it out. I've got. You'll see how I kind of got this in. This is the uh, magazine tube sticking up out of here, out of the uh, degreaser tank. That's kind of a handle for me. We're not going to worry about bluing that. We're going to polish it all off right again anyway after it's been blued. So to me, that's just a handle. I take it out of that uh, tank and I put it in a cold water tank here. And I take a tan pico bristle brush and I kind of just brush over it a little bit. And that's to make sure I get all the uh, buffing compound and, and uh, crud out of the screw holes. There it is, it's all buffed and polished, and uh, uh, I've touched up a little engraving work on this one. And uh, we're going to put it over in the salt tank. Right here behind me is our salt tank. And uh, there again, I'm going to put this, kind of lean this in the tank, immerse it in the bluing salts, which is just sodium hydroxide. And uh, there again, the uh, magazine tube sticking up out of the the salts and uh, that doesn't really hurt a thing because that's got to all, all be polished off bright again uh, after we blew it. <coughs> excuse me, after we blew it. So um, we're going to leave it in there for about 15 or 20 minutes and uh, uh, these salts are new. We just changed them out here just yesterday so uh, they'll blue pretty quick. And uh, when I take that out uh, you'll see that that receiver will be blackened up nicely and then we'll commence to clean it up and assemble that gun. But uh, that's the basic idea behind bluing. Uh, We've got a barrel in here kind of hanging on a, uh, a hanger here. Uh, down at this end of the bluing tank, we've got some baskets of small parts. And uh, uh, we put the small parts down from one end. But uh, that's about all this tank does. They call it a bluing tank. It's actually a blackening tank. It just blackens. And they call it express bluing because it's fast. It's not, a, it's not this slow rust bluing like they used to do. We're trying to make a little profit with this business, so we try to uh, make things go a little faster so we'll be pulling out in just a minute you'll see if that receiver will be nice and black and then we're going to get into the assembly part okay we put this uh, receiver in this uh, salt tank here about 15 20 minutes ago and we're kind of going by our little uh, thermo thermometer on the wall and uh, it's up to about the right bluing temperature and these are new salts we just changed out this week so it doesn't take very long so uh, we're going to pull this receiver out and uh, take a look at it we're going to put it in the cold water and rinse it off. And uh, we're going to look at it. Then we have a black receiver. It's uh, nice and black. See the hand of uh, off our magazine tube here, all kind of cruddy where it was hanging out in the salts. But we don't care about that because we're going to buff that off. Anyway, we're going to come right over here and put it right in some boiling water. And this is just hot boiling water, which all this does, it just cooks out the salts out of the threads and the screw holes. I'm just going to kind of lay it in there carefully. There again with my handle sticking out that, my magazine tube, that's just something to hang on to. We're going to boil this in hot water for, oh, five or ten minutes just to kind of get the, uh, uh, get the uh, salts out of the uh, 
nooks and crannies and the screw hole. Then immediately after we pull it out of there, we're going to head over and quench it in a, uh, a water soluble oil and hang it up the drain. And uh, then it's cleanup time. We're going to go up and assemble it. So that's the phase we're in right now. All right, a few days ago we uh, did a batch of uh, reblues and uh, had, I don't know, seven or eight um, Auto 5 receivers to blue at the time, and we blew them the other day. And as you remember, last time we were down that tank, we were just kind of hanging receivers in there, and magazine tubes were sticking up out of the receiver. Well, we're down to the point now where we're into the assembly work. We just kind of run production line on these. We will blue eight or ten uh, complete guns, and then we'll uh, sit down and spend several days just assembling. So um, we've got one here all broke down in pieces that we blew the other day. Uh, as you can see, I haven't really polished anything up on it yet. We've got um, the old magazine tube where it's stuck up out of the bluing salts, and uh, it's kind of cruddy looking. We're going to buff that off, polish that off. We've got the small parts here uh, that are uh, uh, that have to be cleaned up, and uh, uh, we've got a gold plate to trigger yet. Here's an old rusty trigger. We're going to gold plate that trigger. Uh, we're going to polish the uh, bolt and the carrier and the faller so everything looks new when we put it back together. We're going to get all that rust that's off that uh, on that carrier and the rust off the bolt. We're going to buff that. And uh, then we're going to clean up our magazine tube. I'm going to polish this uh, this uh, blue off the tube so it uh, uh, is all slick and shiny. You want a good smooth magazine tube on an Auto 5 because that has a lot to do with the way the gun works. Uh, a magazine tube that's galled or dirty or got bluing on it is going to cause a lot of drag. Your friction pieces won't slide like they should so it's imperative that you clean up that magazine tube good. So we're going to step over to the buffer here next and we're going to start buffing our bolt and our carrier and our parts and our magazine tube and then we'll just carry on from there. We uh, have stepped over to our buffing wheels. Now around here we call buffing wheels. We use Tampico wheels. We don't use actual rag wheels very often at all. Uh, they're just a brushy wheel. Uh, about like a, it's a Tampico brush. You go buy one in the store. That's what you got on. We've got it in the form of a wheel. And we use some stick compounds on it such as so. And we'll treat that wheel with these stick compounds. And on occasion, we even have a liquid compound. Uh, we call carborundum compound. We paint that on the, uh, the surface of our metal and buff it. And it gives us kind of a satiny sheen. We don't want a real high uh, shine on that metal. We want just a nice semi-gloss shine. So we're going to go ahead and buff off our bolt and our carrier and our small, small parts and get those ready. And then we're going to scrub them off in the parts cleaner and we'll uh, start our assembling process from there. Well, we've just come back from our buffing wheels over behind me here, and uh, we've been working on this little light 20 uh, Auto 5 receiver, and we buffed off the magazine tube, got nice and slick. And the reason I do that, because these bronze pieces, they slide on this magazine tube, and uh, if that tube is uh, cruddy and dirty and, you know, you leave the blue on it, they don't slide well. And that, that's one of the biggest problems Auto 5s have is when they get dry, dirty magazine tubes. They'll stop ejecting on you in a minute, and you got to make sure you set your rings right. But anyway, we buffed off this tube. Um, we've uh, gone ahead while we were at it and we gold plated our trigger and uh, we've assembled our uh, trigger plate here and uh, got all the parts in that and uh, we have buffed and polished our bolt and our carrier and our operating handle and uh, got all the rust and crud off of those now these are nice and shiny and we scrubbed them off in the tank real good and got all the, uh, the grit and grime out of them we're going to check it again to make sure the extractors and all are working we're always checking for broken and worn parts, uh, firing pins. We'll keep an eye on this, uh, the rails on the uh, locking block. Uh, and uh, anyway, we're ready to start putting this together, and we're going to uh, commence by uh, putting all the parts in the sides of the receiver, the cartridge stops and magazine cut off and um, the carrier latch button and all that. And uh, we'll uh, start assembling here, then we'll kind of proceed on in just a little bit. Now this particular gun here has got roll pins. Uh, some of the early models have an actual screw that goes in that holds these uh, uh, magazine cutoffs and your carrier latch and your uh, cartridge stop. Uh, they actually have a screw. These are the newer models. These have roll pins. You want to make sure you use a roll pin punch because you don't want to uh, get down and uh, get your punch uh, flaring out your uh, parts that are causing problems. It drive down into that roll pin and then you've got real problems, so you want to make sure you use a big enough punch that it doesn't get down in that roll pin. And uh, roll pin punches are good to have a little 
part on that makes them so they go in better. Uh, we're going to install our springs here, and uh, and we'll get into some other parts we're going to be installing. So we're commencing to uh, install our uh, our breech bolt. And uh, our operating handle goes in, press, and uh, the link comes down. Then we have a uh, cartridge stop, a spring, goes in the bottom. Uh, these have a, uh, this uh, particular model has a knurled uh, pin. Sometimes they have a flat on that keeps them from working out. And uh, these parts uh, go in like so. And we have a little slot in the side of the receiver that makes room for it there. We install them and uh, drive them in. Make sure everything's tight. We're going to put our uh, action spring in. Sometimes the old models have a, a wooden plug here. These new plastic ones last quite a while. They'll break sometimes, but the old wooden ones have to be replaced quite often. But this is a newer model gun with the plastic, so they, they hold up pretty good. And we're going to install our uh, carrier. Let's say two piece carrier. Split carrier, speed load as they call it. And uh, you got to put your carrier screws in. They say, well, are these screws uh, marked? How do you know which one goes in which which side? And I said, well, you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. They're not marked. Uh, uh, you just put one in and try it and see how it indexes up. And if it indexes up right, then you got the right one. So 50-50 chance of getting those right. Of course, I got this one wrong, uh, so no biggie. We just pull it out and slide in the, the, this one and this one will be the right one. I don't put my lock screws in until I finish everything. Alright, we're continuing our uh, assembly process here. We have our uh, bolt in. We put our uh, spring, our action spring back in through here. Got to watch on the old models. These things were threaded and they have a tendency to break off. Uh, this particular one here is a, a silver solder newer model. They don't break off as readily. In fact, it's rare that they do. Um, so we're always watching for things like that. The old ones will crack right where the threads weaken them. Now, the, the important thing on Auto 5 too, you want to get a little heavy oil, a little oil on this action spring. You want a little oil on your uh, uh, carrier dog, and uh, and uh, also in the uh, trigger assembly here. You gotta double check them, make sure your uh, safety sear is working properly. Uh, it should drop off first before the um, uh, interrupter catches. Uh, let's let's go. Uh, we're gonna check if that works. We want a little uh, uh, oil on the carrier spring here. Some of the early models also have a, uh, a hammer that doesn't have a roller on. These have rollers, which are good. If they don't have a roller on, you gotta watch those. You gotta. They really need a drop of oil there because they, they bind sometimes and the hammer uh, will lock uh, gall and bind down and won't release. Uh, you wouldn't think they'd do that, but they sure do it. So um, then we're going to uh, carefully slip this in. We slip it in from the rear, the trigger plate, so your uh, uh, carrier spring will catch that carrier uh, dog. Then you just kind of rotate it in. Uh, from the front, put your front uh, trigger plate screw in. You have to pull back your bolt just a little bit before you can put that rear one in because see, you can't get that to come down in the position where it needs to be. So uh, just pull your bolt back a little and that'll release that. Some guys, I had guys, gunsmiths call me and couldn't understand why they couldn't get that rear uh, trigger plate screw in. I told them to pull back the bolt a little bit and it'll go right in. So we'll go ahead and uh, put these screws in. There again, we don't put the lock screws in until last. Um, we get everything all uh, in here and indexed up. And sometimes if I'm going to test fire a gun as a repair or a mechanical job, I um, I don't put the lock screws in until I'm completely done test firing and all. Because if I put them in, that's just something else I've got to take out. So uh, we'll go ahead and kind of get this all indexed up and ready. Then we'll next thing we'll do is install our lock screws and uh, mount the new wood on this gun or the refinished wood. So anyway, we're just in the final process of uh, installing this stock. We've got our uh, uh, our stock retaining screw in. Now we're going to get our lock screw in. Got that in. Now we're going to slide on our recoil spring. And I would like to install these, uh, set them up for heavy loads. I just do that uh, kind of the way we did it. Brown, we always set them with heavy loads, so I do the same. 
these uh, steel friction rings go bevel up. Bronze ring uh, goes bevel up. Got to always remember that. And uh, that'll set it for heavy loads. Now, of course, if you were shooting uh, light loads, you want to pull this uh, steel ring off. Now, you can put that in your pocket where you'll lose it, or you can take and put it down to the turn of the bevel down and just put it underneath your uh, recoil spring. And that's just a storage place, is all that is. Uh, beats putting it in your pocket because that's how you lose it. But anyway, we're going to set this gun up for heavy loads. Bevels up. And here's a real critical part, too, is just a drop or two of motor oil uh, under that bronze ring and uh, put it on and spin it a few times. Now we've got our barrel all cleaned up, ready to assemble. We've polished the, uh, uh, the bores on this gun and uh, we uh, polished the crown. And when we blued it, everything turned black and uh, we went back and, uh, and polished off this uh, black barrel extension so it all looks factory. And then uh, we're going to slide this barrel into the receiver where it belongs, push it down, and slide her forearm on. Make sure it seats down good. Got to push your barrel down a little bit to get the seat right. And spin on your cap. Make sure you get it on all the way. And then I like to kind of cycle it a few times to make sure that everything's working freely. And uh, this one's a little sticky, but it's coming around. And uh, yeah, it's going to work fine. And um, of course, then we go back and double check, make sure our safety works. And uh, uh, make sure uh, everything is free free and clear. Sometimes we'll shoot these, off times we don't because we just know they're going to work anyway. We put so many of them together. But that'll be a final finished product. Uh, gun started off a uh, rough, rough condition. We've now got this gun to where it looks like a new Browning Auto 5. Uh, the engraving's all there. It's all good and sharp and crisp. If we were to lose some engraving, we'd have put it back on. This one wasn't really uh, bad enough that we lost the engraving. I thought we would from the beginning, but we didn't. But anyway, that turns out to be a nice looking gun now. Looks a good guy. Probably won't want to take it out and shoot it. Probably put that in his gun cabinet and just leave it there. And, and uh, kind of a collector thing now. So that's what you can do with them. That's, uh, you can start off with a rough one and you can make that thing look like a new gun. And uh, that's where we ended up on this one. Mm -hmm.